Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is painting time. We got this nice thing here. It is fully dried, everything like that. It's been a few days. So first up, we are going to be using some black as a primer. I'm using Apple Barrel here. It is a very nice, smooth flowing one here. I got this nice big bottle because, well, you prime a lot of miniatures. You use black a lot. Um, I'm not going to bother using a palette or anything like that because it's all going on here anyway. So we're just going to put it straight onto the model and we're going to start here. Um, so we want to just start working here. Make sure it's nice, even, um, semi-thin coats. You don't want super gloppy. That way it doesn't lose textures or anything like that. So you just want to paint it all over. Keep it nice here. You, got, you want to work fast in case you make a mistake. So you, uh, can fix it easily enough. This paint luckily dries pretty quick, uh, which means I don't have to wait too long between priming and doing other paints. Uh, first up, we are going to work on the Frost Giant here. So this is my blues. Unfortunately, my container dropped, which means it got all jumbled. Um, I used to have them sorted by um, shade and everything like that, which would make, would make this a lot easier. Um, but unfortunately, I, it, it had dropped there. So we're just going to dump it out here. We're going to look for the paints that we want. It is a Frost Giant, so we are going to use blue. So what we want to do is we want to go from dark and work up to light. So we want to find a nice dark color that will then we can then um, blend into the light here. So there's so many decisions, which funnily enough, this isn't even like a fraction, a big fraction, I should say, of the available paints. There's a lot of paints out there available. Um, I use Reaper miniatures just because they flow nicely. They, they have nice coverage and I've just always really used them since I started getting into modeling, modeling colors here. Um, so we are going to compare see what would look good. Ultramarine seems to be working good here. So we're going to use a shadow and the blue. I do have the triad of it, which means it is a shadow, mid-tone, and light. Um, so now it's just a matter of finding the light one in here. So we have the highlight, and now we're just going to shoot these away because we don't need them anymore. Nope. All right. Starting off here, got the nice colors here. They are, haven't been shooken really too much. We're going to want to shake them a little bit here. Uh, always make sure you shake before you before you paint, but I have to really make sure because it's been a while since I painted before I uh, started working on this, this one here. So using the shadow, we're going to give a nice base coat around everywhere on the skin of the Frost Giant. I know you might be thinking that Frost Giant should be a little bit lighter color normally, but we want these dark colors to really get there and also be the shadows and like all the recesses and stuff like that. So we're gonna do that, let that dry. While we're doing that, I forgot to bring out the, the hair color, which I'm gonna have a nice and light blue one. So we're just gonna look through here quickly, see what would work well. Um, choosing here, I actually do not remember fully the color here. I was gonna put them up on screen for you guys, but unfortunately, so, some of these bottles I did get from a, um, uh, what's it? The places that have spares, a bunch of spare colors. Um, so they don't always have their um, their their um, labels fully on there. Sorry, brain fart there. Um, so we're just using a little finger paint here, and we are going to start painting up here, give it a nice coat here. I'm using a little bit of water to make it a little bit runnier so it gets all the way down. Um, also, I realized that part of the hair that I was doing is the fur cloak, so I had to use the water to wash that off a little bit which turned into a wash and then got onto some of the uh, skin, which that was all fun. Next up here, we're gonna be using these browns. We're gonna work on Baby Yoda here. Gonna give a nice Jedi looking robe here. I'm going off of memory of what Baby Yoda looks like. Um, so the exact shade and stuff like that might not work fully, but eh, that's fine. Uh, while that color dries, we're gonna be working on the wolf pelt here or fur cloak. I say wolf just cause that's probably the biggest creature that um, could be used. Maybe a polar bear, but Eh, that'd be a lot of white I'd have to work with. Uh, we're going to be using this part here. We're going to be using yellow as a base for the candle. Uh, I wanted this to kind of represent wax and stuff like that because the stereotypical wizard has, you know, what candles everywhere and stuff like that. So we're going to use this. I know it's a weird color. I'm going for the traditional looking candles, which yellow is like, oh, that doesn't, that's not going to work. Trust me, it, it, it ended up working pretty well. Remember to stay tuned till the end here to see how it works. Um, so we're just going to work on these and these supports I decided to make as candles as well Because why not? Uh, up next we have all my greens here. These ones didn't drop so I saw them in 
tones. They don't look like it right now because that's just because they haven't been shaken in a while. So, um, you know, they said it a little bit. But trust me, they were in the normal tones. We're working on the baby's Yoda hand. We only need a drop each. And then now we're going to be working on the lighter tone, the mid-tone of the robe here. We don't want to put it everywhere. We just want it on the raised parts. Um, not the exact edges, but we want them on the raised just to give it a little bit more depth. Uh, I'm trying to remember all the tips and tricks in here. Like I said, it's been a while since I painted when I was working on this. I think I was going close to like six plus months of not painting before I paint, uh, picked this up and started painting it. So uh, trying to remember everything that I had learned and all, all my tricks, uh, tricks I had, everything like that, uh, was interesting for this project. We're taking some of this brown, we're gonna dry brush it on here, just to give it a little bit more depth. Um, this is a, this style is what I learned when I was painting my Space Wolf army, because it had a lot of fur. Uh, it, it works really well for fur, and I've always used it since, um, since I started. So now we are going to do the mid-tone here of the skin. So I'm working on everywhere except for the, the recesses. Trying to get it down. Uh, and so far, it is turning out really well. Um, I am pleased with how it's turning out so far. Sometimes when you're painting, when you're progressing, it's like, oh, this is not turning out well. But uh, just, just give it time. Just keep working. There's a good chance that after everything is done, it will turn out really well. So up next here, we are going to be using these this nice light blue, and we're going to be using it as the hair mid-tone here. Um, some of these bottles, some of these bottles have a little bit of a plug, so I have to get them out. Um, be very careful. Make sure you always put your cap back on your paint while you're doing this. Um, so I messed up here. I got way too much paint in my brush for a dry. It, it's kind of like a dry brush. I was wanting to just get the, like the raised areas. Um, I completely messed this up, and I got I got more of this lighter color on than I had wanted. Um, but eh, a little bit of work, and I could kind of sort of save it. It's not gonna oh, um, it's not gonna win any awards or anything like that, but it still looks pretty decent, and I'm pleased with how it turned out. I'll make sure we get everywhere. So even on the top here, we're gonna add some color. So up next, uh, we have pink here. What we are going to do, I noticed the giant had a um, a scar. So I'm mixing some of the lighter, lighter um, blue in with that to kind of make it look like the light flesh color here. Um, so I mean, I'm using this pin vise, I think it is. I think it's a pin vise. Um, because it has a lot more control than brushes do because brushes, the bristles will for, um, spread out and stuff like that. So I just used that, dipped it in there. Now we're gonna use this light tone here to work up on the on the wax here, which I am very pleased with how this turned out. The color made it look like, oh, okay, this is gonna work after a couple of layers, but even the first layer here, it is turning amazing. And it's just a nice extra yellow from the base coat, and, it, and I am extremely pleased with how this turned out. Um, so we are gonna go everywhere here to do this. I came up with an idea for this block here in the middle i was wanting to do it kind of like a galaxy um galaxy swirls so like i'd have you know like the dark of the black and then dark of space nice and black here and then um i would have like different color swirls and stuff like that in there to make it look kind of uh, galactic and like nebula and stuff like that i ended up afterwards trying this out on a slightly bigger object and it worked so what i think is i just didn't have enough experience um, at this time to pull it off on this small of small of uh, miniature here. So now while that dries, we are going to work a little bit more on the brown tones here. Yeah, a little bit more texturing to this fur cloak because it is just looking still a little bit bleh. This, this color looked weird, so I and I do remember what it was called, it is Leather White. It ha, it's a nice white that covers really, really well, but it's not like a bright, bright white, which is really nice, honestly. For those of you that have painted, you guys know that white is one of the hardest colors to get nice done. Uh, this Leather White, oof, it is mm, 
very good here. So here I mix up a skin tone type color here. And it's a little bit older for um, for the the skin of the cloak, which I think this turned out really well, honestly. Like the, the color worked really nicely here. Um, now we are going to work a little bit more on Baby Yoda here. Luckily he only has a hand visible, so it's not too hard. Um, this blue flame is kind of just a white with a slight tinge to blue on it, which is really nice for the very, very highlights of certain things like this hair here. Um, it, it's not, it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted the beard, but it works pretty well. So now we are going to work up on the, um, on the skin here. We are going, we're not going to cover everywhere like we did with the mid tone. We're just, we're just doing it a little bit lighter here. Um, one thing I noticed is I need to start working on my wet blending. Uh, I've never really done that. I'm used to not, if I'm working with a color, I remember my thing of make sure that the color is um, washed out first. So I need to work on my wet blending for sure. I made a wash here to try to bring everything together and then I cleaned everything up, dabbed everything like that, just to hopefully bring all the blues together and make it a little bit more gradient with a nice wash, which I think it actually worked pretty well. Um, I am pleased with how it turned out. Uh, for a bigger skin tone, this actually turned out really well here. Um, now we want to go a little bit lighter here for the for the wax. We're going to build it up. I want it kind of like that um, glossy layer. So we are just going to be mixing up this color here. It's it, it takes some time. To get the right color here. I always like using this pin pin vise here because it is it's, it's very good it's very nice and thin everything like that so that it mixes it really nicely it gets everywhere um, so doing this extra layer here it is very it's now starting to come together really nicely I am pleased on how it came if you guys like it let me know down below if there's any tips or tricks that you guys know of that is like hey you know this might help you level up your painting please feel free to comment down below um, I would greatly appreciate any tips and tricks and stuff like that uh, so now we are going to go light here, which I messed up. And I put a little bit too much. It wasn't a dry brush, it was like a full on paint. So what I, what I do for here is I just get um, my brush nice and wet with water and then put it on there to kind of turn it into a wash type thing and then it will just come out of the, the creases and I can just dab it up. You gotta be very careful though because it might ruin the rest of your painting um, by running down. So you have, to be, you have to have a rag on hand and be able to do it right away. Uh, now I'm gonna take a little bit of dry brush here and hit the edges on this cloak here, this robe, I should say, sorry, not cloak. Bring it all together, give it a little bit more texture and stuff like that, which turned out really well. Um, this one brush that I'm using, I've had for a long time and it's amazing. Uh, next up onto metallics, we gotta use special paint brushes here. As you can see, I keep them separate from everywhere else. We're also gonna need separate water to rinse them out because we don't want metallic flakes in our paint. Um, this is my gold, I've used this gold for ages ages and ages uh it's very nice gold so we're going to use it and start working on the tip here uh, unfortunately i think i have to get more it's running out which kind of sucks but we're going to give it a nice nice layer here go this gold usually covers in about two layers one layer will do nicely but if you want like a real shiny metallic one it's two layers and you're good which is awesome here so we're gonna work on all on this twitch bit here Try to get everywhere. Try not to cover up where the um, the uh, wax is on the other side. This mid tier block here, we're going to turn gold too, just to give it a little bit more color break between the Yoda and the uh, Frost Giant here. All right, we're going to let it dry here for a little while, and then it's done here. I put in another couple layers off camera here another layer i should say off camera here just because it's gonna be the exact same thing you guys don't need to see that so now it is a nice a solid gold up next we are going to get some light leather brown and that white leather here we're going to mix it up for the next coming part here uh, we don't want it too light here we just want a little bit that's why i'm using the leather brown the leather white so that it doesn't go as bright we're gonna be working on a final dry brush here of the cloak try to bring it all together give it a little bit more uh depth because i did the mess up there earlier 
So it's going to be a nice lighter color. And hopefully this brings it out just on the very, very top edges, which it actually did turn out pretty well here. I'm pleased with how it, how it turned out. Um, up next, what we are going to do is work on the galaxies and nebulas and stuff like that. I'm using brown, I'm using purples and blues here. Um, as you guys can see, the theory is there, but unfortunately the execution on this device did not, uh, did not work very well. Uh, I, I am happy though I tried it because it's always good to try new things. You can't really level up unless of course you uh, try new things, right? So I tried a few different methods here, trying to work on here, and I got to the point where I was just like, you know, this is not gonna work. So I scrapped it, I wet it all down to wash it off here. And so I'm just gonna reset. I'm gonna have to use a different color here. Um, I ended up going with Dark Elf here because it is my favorite race in D&D because of Driz Duerden and R.A. Salvatore. Um, so I'm just going to do that and turn it into kind of like a Dark Elf skin here. Uh, there, I do the triad of the Dark Elf skin, so it is the shadow, the mid-tone, and the highlight. So I'm just going to do on that very quickly. The shadow, the mid-tone I should say, sorry, is a very nice color. That is good for everything else. The, 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 the shadow of the Dark Elves is just normal black with slight tinge to it. Um, that could be used for anything really. Uh, but the mid-tone is really nice here and then the highlight also is really good too definitely too all these paints like you should definitely expand what colors you have in your your um, paint box and stuff like that reaper makes fantastic paints like i said earlier they have nice coverage nice flow um it might not look like it always in here but like i said I, i'm using some older paints as well so that you know older paints have a slight problem i'm testing out a new color here to see if it will work um, I just did a little little drop here because I need to touch up a few places here um, and add on a little bit more to get a little bit more coverage. So I just make sure it actually um, it actually uh, matched here, which is very hard for me to do. Which I'm luckily luckily this uh, turned out really nicely. So these are my brand colors here. I'm going to be turning it red. So luckily enough, <laughs> I have blood red. The original colors for my my brand is a blood red for the, the red and then a kind of like a bonish white for the white, but then it's just kind of turned into just a normal solid white. Um, but luckily enough, these colors match really well. Um, for those of you that have seen my Twitch streams and stuff like that, you see, you've see, you seen my mask and this is, this is the exact way that I did my mask here. I built up with layers like this, with these colors. So it turns out really, really nicely and I am pleased with how it came out. Um, it, it is kind of funny though. If you get it on your hands, it does look like you're bleeding a little bit. So be very careful, especially if you're doing other miniatures and stuff like that, because you might it's like, oh, this is just paint, but it actually might be a cut. Or you might go, oh, I'm cut. And it's like, oh, nope, this is just paint. We're good. So just uh, be careful. Definitely not talking from experience. Anyway, we are going to keep doing this here. I'm using this old dice tray to um, help me keep it steady and rotate so I don't keep touching all the rest of the places I painted because then it might wear off the paint. So we're going to let that dry here. We're going to add the the highlights of the, the drow here up to this mid block. And then we're going to come back with our mid tone of red or our, I guess our normal red. Um, it is fresh blood, I believe it is, um, which it sounds funny. Um, but we're going to be a nice, nice uh, layering here. We're gonna let it dry for a bit. We're gonna mask this off here so we don't get the white everywhere. This is a little bit of a tedious process, but it is very necessary so we keep nice crisp lines. And also, cause I'm a little bit sloppy with my inexperience cause I've been taking some time off from this. So we mask it up here. This stuff is really cheap. You can get it for like a dollar at your dollar, um, dollar store and stuff like that. Definitely recommend getting it if you're doing different projects. So first up, we're gonna be using our leather white here to give a nice light uh, base coat. So I did do a couple of uh, layers of the leather white. 
and now we're going to do pearl white here this pearl white has a nice coverage as well but it has slight flake uh, metal flakes in it which i didn't i didn't think they were metal flakes i thought it was something else when i first started using it but it turns out really really good here once it is done and i am pleased with how it uh turned out here sorry for the slight like stop motion here i don't know why when i was um speeding up this it started to jank like this um just bear with me please so now we're gonna go with our our um freshest blood here color and we're just gonna hit the edges even though that's not how highlighting fully works we're just doing edge highlighting because it it does work in this case um so we're just gonna go and very carefully make the little lines on the edges uh don't want to get it everywhere as it might ruin it now we're gonna get a light brown here mix it up with a little slight lighter and then we're gonna do these little nails here on the paws just to give a little bit more a little bit more detail uh using the pin vise again i keep calling it a pin vise i feel like it's not actually a pin vise um but using that to do the nails and i think that really makes a pop i think that uh ties it together there that's that, that, that's nice it, it gives it a little bit more you know instead of just brown to brown to uh blue but here is the wand this is my wand of transitions wand of transitioning i don't know Oh no, here. We're gonna test it out to see if it works. Does it have power? Come on. I know I know I have a little bit of power in here. Come on. You got it. Come on, you stupid wand. Let's go, please. Work. Don't 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 do this. Okay, so if you want to help charge this, remember to like and subscribe and follow on Twitch. Come on, come on. We got this. A little bit of power. That's all I need to show them off. Come on. There. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, there we go. See, a little bit of power is all you need. Remember, help if you want to help charge this, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitch. All those help charge this up. But here is the completed, completed one. I hope you guys enjoy that. I know that this is a little bit of a longer video, but that is the the one that I made. Um, it was made out of misprints and failed prints for 3D printing. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, to keep all those because you can always do stuff with them. If not, then just hit me up and it's like, hey, I got all this. What do you recommend if you know if you're drawing blanks? Uh, join the Discord. That's the easiest way to get in touch with me for that stuff. All those links in the description down below. But I appreciate you guys watching this. Remember to like and subscribe. Like I said, it will help fuel that wand. But I will see you guys all later. Remember to stay safe, stay healthy, stay awesome because you guys are all awesome.